Hey everybody, Hunter Fisher, Trapper, Trader, Guide, Scout, and Interpreter, and just a country cook, Steve Hall, here in Nashville, Tennessee, along with Pretty Miss Sheila, running that camera. Hi, Sheila. Hi. Today I'm going to cook up some memories. I remember when I was a little kid, my dad's sister, of course he had a lot of sisters and brothers, but my dad's sister, Lori, lived in Iowa, Sioux City, Iowa. They lived all over, but at the time I'm talking about, they lived in Sioux City, Iowa, and I believe it or not, I don't know how I remember this, Carlin Street, I think, down by a park. And she married a guy by the name of Dale Grone. Well, great guy, drove truck, and I used to ride around the truck with him when I was a little kid. That's a whole nother show. And she used to do a lot of cooking, and neither one of our families had very much money. So she made goulash about two, three days a week. And I loved the goulash, but it was so simple and so basic. Didn't have a lot of meat in it and a lot of these big noodles. And there was always some salt and pepper on the table and bread to fold over and eat with it. And a bottle of ketchup if you wanted to make it a little more tomatoey. Not this real expensive diced tomatoes and stewed tomatoes, but ketchup. So it was pretty basic, but it was absolutely delicious. If you'll come on over here, I'm going to whip up some goulash today. And I'll bet you ate goulash when you were a little kid. So today is Aunt Lori's goulash. Not exactly the way she made it, but I am going to keep it kind of basic because I see a lot of goulash recipes online where they got a whole plate full of pasta and a big pile of seared beef and real expensive ingredients. And that don't look like goulash. When this gets done, I'll show you what goulash is supposed to look like. It's supposed to look like Aunt Lori's. Come on over here. Let's get started. All right. I got a little bit of olive oil down here in my Dutch oven. I'm going to add some hamburger. In fact, two pounds of hamburger that I browned up in the other room because you didn't want to sit here and watch me brown up hamburger. And I drained all the oil out of it. Got rid of all the grease. And now that that burger's browned up, I'm going to put in one sweet Vidalia onion. In fact, it's a pretty big one. Almost two cups worth. And a one cup or about a medium green bell pepper. And I'm going to let these veggies kind of soften up in here, stir it up a little bit. And let me tell you, I went with hamburger, all both two pounds, because I wanted to stay traditional to Lori's recipe, which had hamburger in it. But you can mix up the meat, and you don't know how bad I wanted to take one pound of beef and one pound of bison or American buffalo meat and put in there, because you can put in Italian sausage as the other pound whatever, but start with two pounds of meat, and I'm going with two pounds of hamburger because, like I said, I want to make the goulash that I ate at the Groans house. Give just a minute, and I'll be right back with you as soon as these veggies soften up a little bit. All right, my little director, Sheila, had me move this pot a little bit further towards the camera so she could see down in there better. And we're going to start out with a can of diced tomatoes. Let me go ahead and dump them in there, then I can read the can a little easier. This is uh, a can of diced tomatoes, and I like this because it says basil, garlic, and oregano on there. Then we're also going to put in a can of stewed tomatoes, juice and all, to give it a little body, because the stewed tomatoes are a little more chunky than the diced tomatoes. And let's see if it's got a, yeah, 14.5 ounce can. Let me see, I'm sure this is the same. Yes, 14. 5 ounce can of each. Can of diced tomatoes and a can of stewed tomatoes in there. Now remember, I'll always put all the ingredients right below the video. In fact, if you look under the video, sometimes you'll see a couple, three lines and it'll say show more. Click on it and the entire recipe will drop down for you. You never have to go to a blog or a website or anything to get our recipes. And I'm not really sure why they do that. I mean, it's none of my business, but when they dump in a whole bunch of ingredients and saying, if you'd like to know how much, go to our blog or our website. And I just, I just soon it was right there handy, so that's why I put it right underneath our video. Now, we've got a can of each of the diced and stewed tomatoes. And a lot of people put a tomato sauce in here at this point, but I'm going to put in some uh, pasta sauce. And this is Barilla, I think it's pronounced Barilla, and it says... Italian's or Italy's number one brand of pasta sauce and you can put any pasta sauce you want in there but I'm actually going to pour this in until it gets to the consistency that I want and I'm thinking 
and stir that meat and let it absorb all that. Yep, it's going to take the whole jar. And this jar of pasta sauce, I always try to throw the amounts at you. Let's see here, 24 ounce jar of pasta sauce. Now at this point they also put in all their seasonings like a tablespoon of Italian seasoning. You can't have goulash without a tablespoon of Italian seasoning in there. We're going to put in a tablespoon of paprika. And I got to show you this. I bought this. This is McCormick's Gourmet Smoked Paprika. Boy, it just smells and tastes so good in recipes. That's what I'm using from now on because it's so good. Let me get that in there. Boy, this almost looks like you could eat it right now. You could actually whip it up to this point and put it over toast or something. I don't know because it just looks so fantastic. Now I've got a little planter on the back porch and I got all kinds of herbs in there and I went out and chopped up about four or five leaves of basil that I got back there. That's going in now. A tablespoon of minced garlic. And let's see here. I got a teaspoon of soy sauce and a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. They're in the description box below, but I got a teaspoon of each and they're both in here. I just thought no sense dirtying up an extra little cup. That was one teaspoon of Worcestershire and one teaspoon of soy sauce in there. The flavors are going to be so fantastic in here. Now we're going to put in a teaspoon of chili powder and that's going to be pretty much all of our dry ingredients. I'm getting ready to put in some water and I see people put in like two cups or three cups of water at this point and what that water's for is after you simmer this for about 25 minutes when we pour in the pasta it's going to soak up so it's thick now but it needs liquid. I'm going to put in two cups to start with and then I'm going to see how it looks. I might add another cup but I see people put in water and then a beef bouillon cube. Well I like flavor so by putting in water and a beef bouillon cube you're basically ending up with beef broth. So why not use beef broth? So that's what I'm doing. There's two cups and let's see how that looks. Because this is going to simmer for about 25 minutes, I might add a little more. And this is the box that I took it out of here. This is 32 ounces and I used, I'm going to measure it for you because I don't like to just shoot from the hip and you're thinking, now how much did he put in there? Let's make a third cup. So it's three cups of beef broth. And I think that might be okay. And here's the thing. We can always add more later on to get it to the consistency if it's too dry. But I don't think it's going to be. Doesn't that look fantastic, Sheila? It's almost like a chili. I know. It's got to be eaten now. <laughs> and, and you probably could. It's just that good. So what we're going to do is we're now going to simmer this for about 25 minutes. And then we'll be back to add our pasta. We'll see you then. Now it's starting to simmer. But as I move this beef broth out of the way, you know what I discovered? Two bay leaves that are supposed to be in here. You know me, I forget stuff from time to time. We're going to pull them out later, but we're going to dip them in right now just to kind of let them cook in while we simmer. So let's get back to simmer, and I just had to have Sheila turn the camera back on so I could tell you to add a couple of bay leaves in there. Boy, this just looks terrific, and it smells so fantastic. We'll see you in about 20 more minutes. All right, let's take a peek. Looky there. Man, oh man, that's been simmering for about 25 minutes. Now we're going to put in one pound, the whole box, of Cremette Large Elbow Macaroni. We're going to dump that in there. Stir this around a little bit. Now that's starting to look like goulash. It's got a few extra goodies in there. I think maybe there wasn't quite that meat, much meat because we didn't have a lot of money back then. 
I don't think it was a lot of fancy stewed tomatoes. I think there was maybe a little more ketchup in there than anything else. But I'll tell you what, it was made with love and it tasted fantastic. All right, let's simmer this again for another 25 minutes and let our pasta get soft and we'll see you then. Bye-bye. All right, let's take a peek. Oh, yeah, looking really good. Let me kind of push whatever pasta is at the top kind of down in there and kind of turn it over just a little bit. See that pasta is already puffing up nice and big, taking on the flavors. <laughs> This is looking so good. Our little bay leaves are staying right where we can retrieve them later. So that's looking good. About another 10 minutes here. Well, that smells great. Looks terrific. We got about 10 minutes for this to simmer. Let me share something with you. After we got done eating goulash at Lori's house, all us kids would go in the living room to watch scary movies. Then it was time for some popcorn with that scary movie, and she had them little jiffy pop pop things where you shook it on the stove and it twisted and puffed up into a big aluminum foil thing. Or she'd just jump, dump it right in a pan and cook up popcorn. But we always had a great big huge tub of popcorn on the living room floor where all the kids sat, and everybody got their own little bowl so you could scoop some popcorn and eat, but there was a main one in the middle. <clears throat> and I'll never forget, if it just seemed like Back then, you guys got high-tech movies now where the graphics are phenomenal. But back then was like the Wolfman. And you remember when he slowly changed and they did the high-speed photography where he grew more hair on his hands and fingers? And he was the scariest thing on TV. And sitting behind us was Dale Grohn and my father and my mom and Lori after everybody was done eating. And us kids were sitting there and as the Wolfman's hand was coming around the corner and he was just getting ready to grab the lady who didn't even know he was there and everybody's like look out look out my dad and Dale would go watch out and the sky would turn white with popcorn and two or three kids would run in the other room crying stop that man you scared me so those were the good old days I, I really miss that kind of thing and I really miss Aunt Lori's goulash. It'll be done in about five more minutes because I've been running my mouth over here. But I'll bet you got some memories around goulash when you were a kid if that's what you ate. And isn't it something how a meal, whether it's a barbecue roast out on the grill that dad used to slice and make sandwiches for us kids or fried fish up at the lakes or goulash at Lori's house brings back so many memories. And we were talking about dishing this up and Sheila said, I remember when we used to make goulash and mom down south in Alabama makes some cornbread and they'd crumble it up and put it in the goulash and food. And I, I think that is a big part of why we love to do cooking with Shotgun Red. It's because so many of these recipes bring back so many great memories. Anyway, let's pop the lid on this in another couple, three minutes and see if we're not just perfect. See you then. Will you look at this? Man, oh man. We have goulash. That's what it's supposed to look like. Not a plate of pasta with a big gob of seared meat in the middle of it. That's not goulash. This is goulash. Man, that is so perfect when you can lift it up like that and it doesn't run through that slotted spoon. That is so perfect. Them three cups of broth were just right for this recipe. I am so thrilled. And I got to tell you right up front, it probably won't taste as good as Aunt Lori's, but it sure will bring back a lot of memories. And there's probably some extra ingredients in there maybe that she didn't put in, or maybe she made it just like this and I just didn't know any better because I was only 10 years old. But look at what we have. Wow. I am so thrilled. Now we got two different spoons here. One for me and one for Sheila. Mine is the bigger spoon and she likes them little baby spoons and little baby forks. I don't know why, but she just does. Let me move our little bay leaf back out of the way here. What do you think, Sheila? I love it. It does look fantastic. I am so tickled that it turned out this good. One thing missing. Bread buttered up real good, folded over. Got to have a slice or two or three 
with each plate or bowl of goulash or you just ain't living right. Excuse me why I travel back about 52 years. Lori, I miss your cooking. I hope I did you proud today. And this is absolutely fantastic. Sheila, did you have a good time with this recipe today? I sure did. I did too. I hope you enjoyed this recipe. I hope it brought back some memories for you and your family. If you enjoy our recipes, we really hope you subscribe to our channel. Little Shotgun Red's face is going to pop up over here in just a little bit. When it does, click on it. And when it says subscribe, next to that is a bell. If that's a notification bell, if you click on that and highlight the box, They'll send you every single recipe that we come out with. We hope you do that. We hope you subscribe to our channel. Give us a thumbs up and all that kind of stuff. And over here, we're going to put another recipe that we really hope you enjoy. And this is the best Aunt Lori goulash you ever made in your whole life. Boy, if it ain't, it ought to be. This is Steve Hall in Nashville, Tennessee, just kind of trucking down memory lane from when I was a little kid. That is what goulash is supposed to look like, not a big plate of pasta with a gob of dark meat wadded up in the middle. That's some fancy chef that ruined good old goulash. The only thing missing is a bottle of ketchup on the table. I remember we used to spread that on everything and mix it in with the goulash to make it more ketchupy, <laughs> if that makes any sense. We'll see you next time right here on Cooking with Shotgun Red. Say good night, Sheila. Good night, Sheila. Great job. Time for me to have one more bite of Aunt Lori's goulash from Sioux City, Iowa.